Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I have the pleasure of discussing with you the anatomy of muscles. That's right, the anatomy of muscles uh, is a fascinating conversation, although this particular video won't be discussing uh, too many uh, aspects, too many particular names, although I'll touch on some. But what I want to uh, do with you in this video is sort of talk about some of the basic descriptive kinds of classifications that early anatomists used when describing the names of muscles. And so I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, you might recognize some of the muscles along the way. The interesting thing about muscles, just before we begin, I, I find this particularly fascinating, just the, the, the term muscle itself, molluscus. A lot of this is, is in the origin of Latin, so molluscus, uh, meaning little mouse. Uh, interesting, this is where we have the, you know, Mickey over here. Perhaps it was thought early on that muscles appeared to be like little muscles running below the skin. It, it kind of makes sense in, in, a, in a peculiar way. Uh, so one of the examples that I want to give you right out of the gate is um, this uh, levator muscle. So a muscle that, that has levator associated with it means it's sort of like levitating or to lift a structure. And so it describes a particular action that the muscle is achieving, which is elevating. And so muscles can be described anatomically by the, their size, their uh, the the orientation of the fascicles throughout the muscle, uh, origin, insertion. And so uh, we're going to take a journey and look at some of the ways in which um, muscles are classified anatomically. So I hope you enjoy it. And so as I was mentioning that levator muscle, uh, it's the muscle right here, the in is extrinsic muscles that surround the eye. Uh, one of them right here, as you can see, is the levator palp palpabri. Uh, superioris. Uh, it's a mouthful right there. So it's the levitating muscle of the upper eyelid. So that raises the eyelid right there as you can see it right there. And so that's kind of interesting. And this one, levator labia uh, superioris, lifting the upper lip right in here. How about that? And so we also have location. Location is very important. And muscles, are, we use the location of the, the bone primarily that's associated with the muscle. And so if you know your bones, and I, and I think you might, or maybe not as much, <laughs> uh, you, that could help. For example, uh, this one right here, temporalis muscle right here, which is associated with the temporal bone of the skull, temporalis. Uh, another example of location, where we have um, in, the, in the femur, which is your thigh bone right here, we have biceps. So two muscle heads, a long head and a short head, so it's biceps, femoralis. And so there you, ha there you have it. It's, close, it's closely associated with the femur. And then the arm bone or humerus is brachii. So we have biceps brachii, this, this very common muscle in the arm, biceps brachii. And then we have muscles that are associated with the ribs. You may know that ribs are, are referred to as costal, so we have intercostal in between ribs. So we have external intercostal, then we have internal intercostal muscles, and then innermost intercostal muscles. Again, location. Uh, another example of location. Here we have the, you know, this big strong bone right here in the in the shin is known as your tibia. So it's tibialis interior. So in front of the tibia. <laughs> right there okay and I mentioned this before but origins are uh, are places where muscles are attached and uh, insertions are also er areas where muscles are attached to bones but usually that's the point of where the the bone is moving and so as it relates to limbs like arms and legs usually the origins are located more pr proximal in in the uh, in the body and the insertions are more distal so I, just wanted to point that out because a good example of this would be the the brachioradialis. So right here, the uh, the origin would be um, the humerus, and the insertion would, would be the radius right there. And so the first part of the name indicates origin, the second part indicates insertion. Okay, 
Uh, another uh, cool example of this is in your neck. Do you notice here um, there's a, uh, a prominent muscle um, called the, the sternoclavicomastoid, clavicomastoid, and its insertion is um, at the mastoid uh, process of the temporal bone, and its origin is in two locations. It's in the uh, manubrium of the sternum and over here uh, the the sort of the medial part of your clavicle right there do you see okay and so this muscle is again you can see a picture of it right here it's sometimes referred to as the prayer muscle because it sort of and it enables us to lift our head up and down like that and so it's 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 substantial okay uh, bones anatomically can be named uh, by their fascicle uh, organization. So if the fascicles are running parallel to one another in a, in a straight line, straight in Latin is rectus. So you have this rectus abdominis right there coming down. Uh, the fascicles could be running in this sort of diagonal direction right here, and that would be oblique or diagonal. We have external obliques, which are located right there. And then we have uh, position. Uh, it could be ex externus right here. In other words, uh, towards it's sort of superficial, like towards the, the surface of the body. So you could palpate the, uh, the temporalis muscle. And you can also easily, towards, towards superficially uh, external, uh, you could sort of palpate your external obliques as well. So position. Uh, it could also be inside. So in deep muscles, so deep tissue muscles, uh, the uh, uh, let's see, ob obturnator interus, internus, obturnator internus. <laughs> How's that? Uh, apologize for for uh, for my pronunciation inability, but it's it's my best effort. So here you have it right in here. So this is a deep muscle a muscle found in the pelvic region right in here. And then I was mentioning this at the top of the video. We have ex, uh, extrinsic muscles, which means that they surround an organ. And these are the classic ones of the eye. And even you can see not only are these extrinsic or around an organ, you can see that, that, look at this one right here. So it's medial, meaning towards the middle. And it's also rectus, meaning that the, the fascicles are running parallel to one another right there. And you can also see uh, a levator that I was mentioning before, superior over here, inferior meaning uh, below. And so there's a logic. <laughs> there's a logic to this. And, and intrinsic muscles would be muscles within an, an organ, like, for example, the muscles that are within your hand, right in here, in particular in your palm that surround your metacarpal bones, okay, within an organ. And then another means of classification is structural, meaning like the number of tendons, or if you will, simply the number of heads. So you could have two or bi, uh, like biceps, brachii, for example, and is an example of that in your arm. And then you can have three heads or, or tri, or triceps are a good example of that. So here's your anterior view, which means that your, uh, your triceps are really more posterior. And so over on this side, you can see how there's there's three heads involved right here. And you notice how the, the tendon that connects these biceps uh, is uh, uh, connecting here to the ulna. And then you can have quadriceps, or four. Uh, these, are, these are pretty famous right here. You can notice here's the, the, the rectus, again, uh, femoris right here, rectus meaning straight. And then you have your vastus uh, muscles, either inter intermedius or lateralis or medius. Uh, right in here. So a total of four. So your quadriceps. And then uh, shape, structural shape. Uh, if some of the muscles are shaped like a trapezoid, like for example, posterior on your back, right below uh, your neck right there and attaching to your shoulders is the famous trapezius. Trapezius or trapezoid. Okay. Also reminds me of the trapeze. Uh, so trapezius, and then you have the deltoids, which are right over here in your shoulder. And that reminded early anatomists of an upside down Greek letter D or a triangle. For, this also means like change, if you're, if you're familiar with that. So deltoid or delta. 
So triangular shaped or trapeze trapezoid or trapezius or latissimus. Like check that out. Latissimus. Look at this wide muscle right here in your lower back. Latissimus dorsi. <laughs> Pretty cool. Or trays. Round. These are uh, trays minor, trays major. These are muscles that um, are associated with your rotator cuff in your shoulder, helping you able to, to, to rotate the, the shoulder girdle. Okay, and then muscles could be categorized structurally by size. You can have uh, short muscles or long muscles, or uh, brevius or longus, like being brief. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm uh, <laughs> sometimes I'm not as brevius as I could be, in, in especially when making these videos. So uh, you have short muscles, and there's some examples. Uh, for example, right here, the extensor. Uh, so, so it also says a little bit about its action. So carpi radialis, in other words, it's associated here with the radius longus and brevis. So you have long ones and short ones here in the forearm. That's, I find that to be pr pretty interesting. And again, I sort of foreshadowed this, but you can also talk about the actions of the muscle, like levator, but you have flexor, extensor, uh, abductor, adductor. And so these names are helpful. Uh, the location's helpful, the size of the muscle is helpful, what the muscle does in terms of action is helpful, insertion, uh, origin, all these things are really uh, helping us out in terms of our anatomy and the muscles. It can get kind of out of hand, just saying. I mean, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of muscles, and so all of these Latin terms, though they may be new, are useful. And, and again, if, they're, if something's valuable, you're gonna wanna spend more time on it and so eventually you'll get it like i mentioned this i won't go through every one of these right here but th but i find this to be pretty cool like brachial is the arm and the wrist is the carpi and and, the, and you know again like this but abdominal is, or abdomen this is your rectus abdominis muscle i was mentioning that before and then you uh i mentioned this before the rectus uh, femoris muscle right in here part of your quadricep uh, right there or thigh um, costal, I think I mentioned that before as being uh, meaning rib or cutaneous. You might be familiar with that being the dermis of the skin. All right. And then uh, again, these are some interesting things here uh, that you can take a look at. And I wanted to point out orus right here. In other words, the uh, obicularis orus muscle. In other words, the muscles that surround our mouth, around the mouth, circular muscles around the mouth. Uh, temporalis, I mentioned this before. Uh, you can easily palpate it on the side of our temporal bone, and that's what that that's where that is associated with. Okay. Um, all right. The medial rectus. I was mentioning this extrinsic muscles that surround the eye, but you have a, a variety. You can use inferior, uh, superior, external lateral, medial, all these things are helpful in terms of the anatomy of the muscles. Uh, oblique, discussing like a slanting or diagonal, rectus meaning straight or transverse meaning uh, going side to side. And those are important when discussing some of these abdominal muscles right here. Uh, the shape of the muscle uh, is uh, plas plastisma. Platisma is this very large and flat muscle right here in our neck. Um, it kind of reminds me, if you're familiar with this, um, this simple organism called uh, uh, platyhelminthes, or, or uh, it's, it's a type of flat worm, platyhelminthes. Uh, so that, that's useful to know your Latin roots right there. And I was mentioning before about deltoid and uh, circular or, or uh, uh, orbicularis like that, pyramid shaped. Uh, you can also have uh, serous, uh, in other words, serrated. And so you have the uh, serratus anterior muscle right over here. It looks like a serrated knife. <laughs> Perhaps it does. Uh, and then latissimus, again, meaning wide, other, other striking fe features, latissimus dorsi, okay, as opposed to uh, other terms, longus, I was, I was mentioning before, alba, meaning white. Uh, you can also describe uh, muscles in terms of, again, uh, their size in terms of like small, great, largest. 
you might be familiar with uh, this very large muscle in your rear called the gluteus maximus, meaning largest of the, of, of the gluteal muscles. All right, and then you can describe actions again. You could have a flexor muscle right here is your flexor uh, carpi radialis right here, um, which is capable of, of, of flexing the forearm or bending movement, flexor. Uh, levator, again, is a rising action right there. But you could have a pronator, a supinator. Uh, those are all action terms of muscles. Uh, and then uh, I find this um, to be kind of interesting, and I want to just finish with this in terms of uh, features describing the anatomy of muscles is this buccinator muscle right in here, uh, which is uh, Latin for like the person who plays a horn. In other words, like uh, English translation would be trumpeter, um, buccinator right there. And so um, puckering the lips, if, if you will, buccinator for, for playing, the, playing the, uh, the trumpet. So I thought I'd put an image of one of my favorite trumpet players there, Miles Davis. You might be familiar. Miles Davis. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video on this brevis video on the anatomy of the of the muscles. Thanks for watching.